You're listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. Thanks to Concordia University, Wisconsin for supporting The Coffee Hour. You can find out more about Concordia University, Wisconsin at cuw.edu. Live Uncommon. During the holidays, particularly around Thanksgiving, Christmas, we spend a little time reflecting on the gifts that God has given us and uh, expressing some gratitude, some thanks as well. Mm -hmm. And today, we like to say thank you to our listeners who, one, spend so much time with us (laughs) here in the coffee hour and on all of KFUO, spending time listening with us as we get to share with you the good news of Jesus in so many of our programs and practical things that can be useful for daily life as well. Mm -hmm. And we are so thankful for Uh, Our listeners who are also donors as well, who step up and contribute and make KFUO a a priority so that we can continue telling that good news of Christ for you all the time. And we are so thankful for our listeners who do that. We want to share a story of a listener with you today. Joining us today, Stephen Walters, a KFUO listener. Stephen, welcome to the Coffee Hour. Thank you so much, Andy and Sarah. It's nice to be here. So... I really want to know your story. I've just, I, I've heard your name a little bit here in the office. When you drop us an email or when Pastor oh, Doug things. has a, uh, yeah, absolutely. Pastor Doug gets a chance to have a chat with you and he's like, oh, you got to hear. And I know Jordan got to meet you not too long ago as well and hear a little bit about your story, but I didn't get to hear your story. I don't think Sarah got to hear your story nope. as well. So why not do that right here on the coffee hour so we can share it with everybody, right? What a great place to yeah. That's what we do on the coffee Happy to share. share all these fun stories right here. So when did you first start learning about or listening to KFUO? I live in the Kansas City area. Myself and family were members of beautiful Savior Lutheran Church in Lee Summit, Missouri, where I'm an elder. And I've always been aware of KFUO being a terrestrial radio station in, in St. Louis. But uh when and where or how KPO became part part of almost a, a daily experience in, in my faith walk was when the KPO app was launched through LWML. I believe that was probably a year and a half, two years ago. That's really where I started to engage more frequently or engage period, right, uh, with KPO through the app and then also through the website uh, by extension of that. But uh, it really was the app that was the catalyst. So how did it become part of your daily rhythm of life? How do you listen? Do you listen all day? Are you one of those people that like turns it on and and basically it's like 24-7 radio? What does that look like for you? So, Sarah, I I would uh, be disingenuous if I said I listened all day, but (laughs) uh, it depends on the rhythm or the flow of the workday, right? Because that's typically when I do listen. I I, uh, am self-employed. Uh, and, and work with various clients. So I, I set my schedule and usually it's uh, just myself and my Mac working throughout the day on various projects. And so so that's when I typically will listen off and on between calls or, or appointments or projects. And I listen through the computer, sometimes in the car. And I will say the app is great with so many vehicles that have the ability to stream through that. So you can listen to your to a show or music through that, but it's typically in the course of the workday, a lot more often in the mornings than the afternoons, although I do catch the, the midday music. But most of the time it's it's coffee hour or law and gospel. I really enjoy the daily chapel, right? That's fifteen to twenty minutes out of the day, right? And it's it's very nice. And then Dice Wrong Word is a, a great Bible class. So I mean, typically it's more weighted towards the morning than the afternoons or even the weekends. Although I do try and listen to Concord Matters when I can. That's a great lineup ah, and, and, and a nice everything. soundtrack for your day. <laughs> yeah. So you mentioned listening in the car and sometimes it, it's worked out somewhat conveniently for you. You've got the app on your phone. You get in your car. Your phone connects to the system in your car through Bluetooth, I assume. And uh, mm-hmm. You can listen. Some use CarPlay as well. You can connect that way. And that's Mm -hmm. a really handy way to listen as well. And you can listen while you're driving. Is that like a daily thing for you? Mm -hmm. Uh, I would say not in the car, but I would say especially when I'm taking our son Grayson to school, sometimes we'll listen in the morning as we drive to school. More often than not, it is uh, while I'm working during the day or sometimes through the episodes that through podcasting, like if I'm out walking one of the dogs in the evening, I'll access one of the programs that way. Now, are you listening to 
Are you listening mostly to the live stream or are you listening to podcasts when you're out doing those things when you're working or out for a walk? Typically during the, the day when I'm working in my home office or at a coffee shop, it'll be listening to the live broadcast, right? And I'll plug in. If there's an episode, if I go through the podcast, and there seems to be a title or a topic that seems especially interesting, right? I might circle back when it's not live, but it's primarily during the weekdays or in the mornings. Now you mentioned you listen to Concord Matters, if you can catch it on the weekends. What is it about that program in particular that you really enjoy? That is one of our more unique programs that we have. So, so as I said, I'm an elder at our congregation in Lee Summit. And I remember speaking with my uncle, who's a retired LCMS pastor. And when I was nominated or was elected the first time as an elder, and I asked my uncle John what what advice he might have. And he's like, read your church constitution and familiarize yourself with the book of Concord. Mm. So that to me, uh, Concord matters. That is a, I don't want to say the clip notes, right? But rather than sitting down, pen and paper, dedicating time, right? Being able to uh, absorb some of that through osmosis, if you will, just by listening. I'm a audio learner as well as visual. But it's just a, as I share with others about KFU or the opportunity, I, I think the big takeaway that I have is that it's just a convenient, and that's not a dirty word, a convenient way to have that daily touch point in your faith life, right? We get very busy. There's many things going on, but the convenience of KFUO, if you will, and is fantastic through the website, through the the app on, on my case, my iPhone. And I really enjoy it. And I'd like to add one other thing. What another takeaway that I have is I'm here in Kansas City here. And there's a lot of Lutheran churches here in the Midwest. Maybe not so much as you get into different parts of the, the country. But one thing that I've really enjoyed or felt strongly about is it, it gives a sense of community because we're all spread out. But, and, and whether you're in a larger church, a mid-sized church, or a country church, so many of us are one or two generations off the farm or from a small town. We can, many of us relate to it. it to me, it, I feel more connected to the Lutheran church. And that's not from a being prideful, but just a sense of connection. That's really encouraging to hear because that's really what we're, we, <laughs> we aim for is to, to support you in your daily vocations. And when I say you, I mean, certainly you, <laughs> Mr. Walters, but also to you, every other listener as well, mm-hmm. who are connected to the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod in some way, whether you're a, a member of a congregation or just appreciate what we believe, teach and confess as Lutherans. That's what we want to do is to be able to connect everybody. And I love it when we get to tell missionary stories so that we get to feel connected to our missionaries who are serving around the globe, Mm -hmm. because sometimes it feels like they're so far away, but to be able to be connected with them and, and to share their stories and to help me, to help you see, for all of us to see how we are connected in the body of Christ and that the work that they're doing there on behalf of the body of Christ to proclaim that good news in places where you and I can't necessarily very easily go. Mm -hmm. I love when we get to share those stories. Now, you mentioned that you listen while working, so listening on your computer at home, listening while driving sometimes. You also listen sometimes while walking the dog and sometimes at a coffee shop. We've got a running list here. (laughs) Any other like far-flung or unusual places that you've been (laughs) listening to KFUO? So, so... Yeah, I would say that pretty much captures 95, 98% of, of my day. But I will say in terms of the convenience, our son, Grayson, he's in fourth grade. He's a big fan of KFUO and he listens on his, on an Amazon device in the evenings after we do devotions and prayers more often than not. Now I will say if the Chiefs are playing late or maybe there's a KU basketball game on, he might have that, listen to that. But more often than not, in the evenings, he will listen. Obviously, that's when there's quite a bit of music or it's music. Mm -hmm. But there have been times where I've gone in the morning and he is awakened earlier than the alarm 
that has gone off and he will have cave Huo on as well. And there, there might be a recording somewhere you have, you'd have to speak with Jordan of Grayson talking about how he likes the morning prayer mm-hmm. um, that we did when we visited the, the studio last uh, spring. We are spending some time talking with uh, one of our listeners, one of our favorite listeners here, Stephen Walters. <laughs> and we have more to share of his story in just a moment right here on The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. At Concordia University, Wisconsin, we believe you were created for a reason, to use your God-given gifts to help others. To live a life of self-sacrifice in a me-first world. To live a life that's uncommon. Whether you're taking one of 50-plus online programs or learning with us in person on the shores of Lake Michigan, you'll be equipped to make an uncommon impact. Learn more at cuw.edu. Concordia University, Wisconsin. Live uncommon. My name is Grayson. I live in Lee Summit, Missouri, and I go to beautiful Savior Lutheran Church. I have been listening to KFUO for about a year, I guess. I listen to KFUO on my Amazon Alexa and in the car. My favorite program on KFUO is Morning Prayer. It makes me feel like it's going to be a great day. Welcome back to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. Today we're talking with KFUO listener Stephen Walters, learning his story about how KFUO has become a part of his life on a a pretty regular basis, listening to the programs. Now, you mentioned Concord Matters, trying to catch that on the weekends. And he mentioned one thing about it that I think we can add to that list of descriptors for that program because we always talk about Christ confessing Concordians. Yes, we do. It's convenient, too. Ah. So we'll add that to that. I'll give that to Pastor nice Finner, alliteration well, yes, going on. add that to the list for that. Is there, of the programs you listen to, is there an episode that has really stood out for you that has been particularly meaningful or that you just really remember? Or when you're thinking of what is KFUO, that one really stands out for me. <laughs> so I, I wouldn't say that there's been an episode that I immediately identify or assign to KFUO. But, and this is not puffery towards the coffee hour, but your show, one of the reasons your show is very interesting because it brings in so many different facets of the LCMS experience that are outside of what I would consider the typical church experience, right? For awareness and appreciation and and, and maybe support by the broader church body. But there have been a couple I'll mention that really have struck with me that I've shared with others I've talked about with. One is the the episode, Andy, that you and I believe it was Jordan did with the two Navy chaplains Mm -hmm. a few months back, including the admiral in charge of the who's an LCMS pastor who is in charge of the Navy, Marine Corps and Coast Guard chaplain corps, I believe it is. Oh, yeah. Um, I remember crying through that whole episode. (laughs) Yes. Yeah, and, and, and the one chaplain, he's a pastor in Massachusetts. I, I apologize, I cannot remember the name, but I remember the stories. And he talked about his experience when he was in the Marines prior to going back to school in Afghanistan, et cetera. I shared that with a few members in our congregation that had been in the service, specifically in the Marines and had been in Afghanistan or Iraq, just because I thought they would find that even more impactful or be able to relate to that. So I've shared that. Another show that just really kind of illustrates some of the things that y'all focus on or or, are working on is, I want to say this was probably back in the summer or last spring when you had Flame on (laughs) the show, right? So I just, I loved his story. I was humbled by some of the things that he mentioned, a lot of us are lifelong Lutherans, right? And we don't do it because that's what we know, but it's what makes sense to us. And we just, there's this, I don't want to say acceptance, but it's just part of the the journey, right? Hearing Flame talk about his journey, right? With his, I believe he, his grandmother raised him, right? But his process through various denominations or organizations, I think there was some Pentecostal background, et cetera. But anyway, and then just him really getting into the to Luther's story, Book of Concord, the reasons why, right? It, it was very humbling that he did this 
deep dive this study of theology, of liturgy, of why. And that's one part of the story on that episode. The other one is then we're in the car and my wife is driving and I'm like, let me play this for you. And I found some music on YouTube, I think it was. And and my wife is very much a suburban baseball mom, if you know what I mean by that, like in the SUV doing her thing. She's like, and she was not raised Luther, right? I mean, she was confirmed, et cetera, right? Uh, Raised Southern Baptist, but she's like, I can listen to this music. I'm like, whoa, right? Because, (laughs) but anyway, so there's that. And then I'm up at at a meeting or something and I'm talking to our ministry staff and our associate pastor, Devin Burmeister, Pastor Devin Burmeister, who he and his wife, Naomi, just had uh, their first child last week in my grace. There's a shout out for you, Pastor Devin. Um, He's like, oh yeah, I had classes at seminary with Mm life. And I was like, oh, okay. All right. And so just all of it. And Pastor John, I love you too. Anyway, he's our senior pastor, but just the story, the different ways that people relate to it. And I think that's what's so interesting and beneficial for your show is you're bringing in RSOs, stories outside of that typical church experience, like I said earlier. And it just creates an awareness and honestly, an appreciation. And it, it's not the individuals, it's the Holy Spirit working through those individuals and those stories. And yeah, it's kind of neat. Yeah, I think that was... If I can say that on radio. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that was one of our goals, I think, when we started this whole coffee hour experiment project was just to connect people to more places and people and, and happenings and everything across the Synod because there's so, so many things that happen across the Synod. And there's a lot of people that end up being connected through that programming and just know other people because of that shared experience. Yeah, yeah Sarah, you, you came back to that word connecting, right? And, and again, it's that connection. It's that awareness, right? It's that shared experience. If, even if you never meet someone, their, their life is very different from you, but there are tenets of, that, of those lives that we all share together through being part of the church body. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The let me ask this: Why? What prompted you to become a supporter of KFUO? So um, that's an interesting story. As I said, I'm an elder in our congregation, right? And um, starting becoming aware of K, not aware of, but becoming engaged with KFU, maybe that's a good way to put it, and just how much I felt I benefited from that, right? I started to do some, cre- try and create some awareness within our congregation. So every week there's a, a next upcoming week, I go onto the KFU website and for the week of, right, I, I copy and I send that over to our administrative assistant and she puts that in the bulletin. There, I had someone shared their talents and they created a slide to put up on the scroll that goes throughout our church on various TV screens, right? There's a KFUO scroll, right? And then I was like, I want to get the elders involved somehow. And I reached out to to, to Pastor Doug, Doug Gribbenow, and um, I, I, I talked to him about what I'd like to do for the elders or not do but uh, how I'd like to engage the elders so that they can start talking about it. And that's something I talk about annually in an email to my families. But um, he's like, well, we've got these KFUO trucker hats and I'll send them to you. <laughs> and he sent me some and I'm passing them out and at, at meetings and other people. And he did that free of charge. Hopefully there's no run on free trucker hats. But I, I that was when I made a contribution I believe my first contribution to KFUO, right? And I just think it is a valuable tool, an important tool for the Great Commission that that we're out there doing. And again, it's that sense of connection that I just think KFUO brings to the LCMS that that is, is so valuable and pretty special, actually. What is it like knowing that you're part of something a lot bigger, this, this that we're able to share the gospel of Christ across the United States and around the world. And and you're a part of that. What is that like for you to know that? Um, Again, 
pretty humbly, right? I always kind of been a little bit of a, I don't want to say a radio nerd, <laughs> but I remember growing up, I thought it was so cool that in the evenings I could pick up uh, WBAP 820 out of Fort Worth, Texas in Kansas City, right? I was like, oh, that is so cool. They're 500 miles away. I'm listening to it. Uh, I subscribed to Sirius XM and, uh, and I know terrestrial radio folks are, oh, right? But I, I say that because I was listening to a, a, an old time show once and it was a show commissioned at the end of either the Second World War or Victory in Europe or something like that. And there was this this show that was written and they had, and they played across it as the story went or as the announcer said, it played across every broadcast network in the United States. And I think it was Victory in Europe. And the speakers were the Archbishop of New York. I don't remember what level, but a head rep, rabbi. And then, so we, they had the, the Catholic Church was covered, the Jewish religion was covered. And then Oswald Hoffman was the speaker that probably checked the box for the, the Protestants, right? And so in terms of radio, I've always been fascinated with the reach of radio. And I know we're now in the, the time of the internet, right? But there is something different about the spoken word about I'm listening to this at the same time somebody a thousand miles is listening to it or around the world. So, and then you couple it with the very rich history of KPO, right? Um, if anyone hasn't checked out the KPO entry in the Wikipedia, it's kind of neat to read it, right? It was probably somebody in St. Louis that wrote it, but anyway, it, it's kind of neat to see it. And then understanding and appreciating the history the commitment that the LCMS has had to reaching the world, right? Just like in the, the Lutheran hour, right? The, the bringing to the masses, right? It, it's just, to me, it, it, it's, it's pretty important and it's fascinating as well, if that makes sense. Stephen, thank you so much for sharing this time with us, for being a part of the coffee hour, helping us bring a nice close. We're not to the end of the year yet, but uh, this Getting is a, a nice way yeah. to to wrap up this year, this season of the coffee hour and uh, our broadcasts here on KFUO. We have plenty of great things lined up for 2024 as mm -hmm. well. He mentioned something that I can only give a, a small hint at, but you did <laughs> mention an, like an old time broadcast you mentioned something about little time broadcast and that's all i'm gonna leave it at right now but there are some great things maybe some great throwbacks in 2024 because we'll be celebrating 100 years of god's grace proclaiming the good news of jesus on kfuo next yeah. year thank you so much Stephen, for spending some time with us on the coffee hour and sharing your story it's been great to to have this chance to meet you right here on the coffee hour well thank you so much andy and sarah my my privilege and pleasure You've been listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. The Coffee Hour with Andy and Sarah is a production of KFUO. To support The Coffee Hour and KFUO Radio, visit KFUO.org. You can also text KFUO to 41444 or send an email to gifts at KFUO.org. And you can call us at 800-844-0524. KFUO. Christ for you anytime, anywhere. Anywhere.